Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we'll look at some Python and I'll show two examples of different ways that you can calculate a factorial in Python. One that uses a loop and the other one that uses what we call a recursive function. It's really very well known and so a good example of some basic techniques. So let's share the screen. And here, so that you can see the result quickly. I am using Replit to be able to type code in. Good. The browser has caught up. Factorial is this calculation. We do the factorial of one is one, the factorial of two, and so on. So the factorial of n is the product of all the numbers from n until one. To write a function that works this out, other side, to write a function that works this out, We are going to, first of all, define the function. And let's give it a name. And we say we calculate the factorial of n. So here, one parameter. Let's ignore the suggestions from Replit. It doesn't know what we want to do. One parameter called n. And with that one parameter, first of all, we're going to count from n to one, uh, or if you prefer, from one to n. And before I do anything else, any calculation, anything like that, I'm just going to check that things are working out. Oops, I forgot the column here, two dots. And for i in that range, we'll just print we'll print the value of i to be able to see Replit is slowly catching up to be able to see what is being shown. Sorry, typos. Replit has caught up and I typed print n, but I mean to print i. Right, so we're not calculating a factorial just yet with that. We're simply printing the numbers that we will want to multiply. But with that, we can call the function waiting for Replit to catch up.
and we run this. And the system counts the numbers from zero to four. Oh wait, if I multiply all of these things together, then I'm not going to get the factorial five. Well, first of all, the numbers are counted starting with zero, so I'll do zero times one, and then times two, and then times three, and I'll get zero, whatever I do. So, uh, Okay, I goes in the range from 0 to 4, but I want 1 to 5. So I'll write down i plus 1 in there. Let's run it again. Yes! Where's my factorial? Where's my... I need a, a number to get my result in. Call it result, and uh, I'll start at one because you know I don't want to start at zero because we keep timesing. So if I start at zero, I suspect that uh, they'll do a problem. Okay, the result is the the result starts at uh, starts at one, and then I don't want to print each number. Well, I suppose I could. But mainly, I want to take the result and each time multiply it by the next number on my thing and change my result. So I'll do result times i. Remember how you can use assignment to actually change a value. The old result is multiplied by i and that new information is put where the result had been giving us a new value for result and each time it prints this thing what uh, what do i do with the result when i've finished doing all this We've calculated a result. This is what the factorial needs to send back at the end of this whole process. So now if I do factorial 5, it will calculate factorial 5. Um, let's put it in a variable and then print it. And the machine should tell us so uh, some big number. Ah, it arrives at zero. What has it? Oh, uh, times i. It has to be times i plus one. Same problem as when I was printing, remember? The machine multiplied the numbers from zero to four. And uh, yeah, that made zero. Check again. 120, that sounds about right. Five times four is 20, yeah, yeah, that's right. Right, I don't need to print anymore. All I wanted is the machine to calculate the factorial not to tell us how it's calculating the factorial so let's comment out the the work in progress information the debugging information that we have used and now we have something to calculate a factorial great can i do the factorial of one i wonder what am i going to get when i do the factorial of zero Yeah, that's correct. 
what A does for I in range zero, which causes it to do nothing at all. The mathematical definition is if your number is less than one, then you get always get one. So here you should be able to do the factor of minus one. And yeah, it say, still says this. So the range minus one, again, the loop doesn't get done at all. That was the first factorial. But there's another one. I'm going to call this one loopy factorial because we're, we're using a loop to count through our numbers. Remember to call it loopy factorial in the name. You can name your functions anything you like so long as you name them the same as when you call them. But we're going to do another one that uses quite a different technique, which is called recursion. And recursion follows us quite a strange idea, which is this. First of all, let's define the signature of our function. So we'll have a, a, a recursion. The, the adjective is recursive version of factor. It still is the factor of n with one parameter. I suppose we'll still calculate a result. Yeah, we'll start the result at one. That worked nicely last time. And uh, at the end of some stuff, we're returning a result. There, I've got my skeleton function. I can even, I can call it. I can do loopy factorial, but I can also do recursive factorial. Let's do recursive factorial of minus one. It's one, right? That's correct. Uh, what if I do the factor of five? Last time it was 120, I think. Still one. Yeah, well, you know, I said result called one with the return result. So what did I expect? And here, how will that work? So the trick is this. The factorial of, uh, for example, five, it's five times four times three times, yeah. that is, it's five times the factorial of four. And so I should be able to do something that works like this. I do five times, then I calculate n minus one, so five minus one, and I, Ask the machine to calculate me the factorial of four. So the, fa the factorial of n It's n times the factorial of the one below. Which will work roughly something like this. Result equal, right, I'm calculating the factor of n. n times the factorial, whoop, typo, 
of the one below, n minus one. I calculate n minus one. So if I do the factor of five, I get five times factor of four. Factor of four is three times factor of two. Factor of two is two times factor of one. Factor of one is one times factor of zero. Uh, uh, no, wait. So that works until we get to one. Or maybe that works until we get to until we get to one. If n is more than one, then we do that interesting one, that strange recursive one. But otherwise, anything like one and below. We just don't do this. We just don't change our result. That's in that case, the result is one. So the factor of one is one, the factor of two, or the factor of zero is one, the factor of anything below that is one. So we don't need that line 10. We need the result equal one in here. Ah, uh, I think this will work. So if we call the factor of five, we'll get five times factor of four, four times factor of three, three times factor of two, two times factor of one. When finally we get to factor of one, the computer does not do this, it does this. That gives us the factor of one and, which is one, and the, the call is done. Ah, what did I do? No, oh, I know what I did. Um, something wrong with the name of factorial in that line. So that is wrong. But that's because I had defined my function and called it recursive factorial. You know, you can name your function anything you like, so long as when you call them, you call the same thing that you named. So I meant this to be recursive factorial, not the left. Let's see, let's check there's no error this time. 120. It did the recursive factor of 5 and it's correct. Let's try the factorial of uh, 2. That's an easy one. I know what that will be. 2 times 1. Um, and let's try some strange cases, so like the factor of one. And just in case, let's try the factor of something really not right, like the, at the edge of our cases, like the factor of zero. Fantastic. Okay, so a factorial is working. What might not be very clear is how. To explain that, we're going to stop the share and we'll look at how the functions are calling each other or how the function in this case is calling itself. I need a couple of props to explain that. To show the contents of one function, or what one function is, is doing, we we'll use this uh, little crate. So this video is sponsored by Home Pride. And here is my factorial function. The real problem is the information that is provided to it. And when it has finished, the information that ah, I need a pen. There. The information 
that it sends back when it has finished. So at first, the system calls out factorial something or other, like factorial five. Factorial five calls the factorial function. And in the factorial function, the five is passed as a parameter. So we now have one parameter in our function. I need some new paper. One parameter in our function. While the function is running, n is now 5. The computer starts its calculation, which is n times the factor of n minus 1. And uh, it calculates that, and wait, it calls factorial. So what do we, what happens? Well, a new function is called, or rather the function factorial is called again. I should have called my function home pride. Maybe I should go to home pride and ask whether they would sponsor this video. Call the function again and add a new, a new frame, we call it a new piece of information in memory for the stack of functions that is being called. In that new frame, we've asking for the factorial of four. So this time, n inside our new function, inside our new form, it's now four. And factorial of four does four times factorial of three. Guess what? It makes a new frame to call out again the factorial function, and this time n is three. And what happens next? It does three times factorial of two. So it calls another one with this time n being two. And finally calls out two times the factorial of one and calls yet another frame on the stack, this time n being one. Propose this. But the stack is quite big now because we've called successively factor of one, then four, then three, then two, then one. And uh, are we going to go on like this forever? Ah, that's an interesting one. One of the things that go wrong with recursive functions is that sometimes we forget to put in some information to tell it to stop putting it new frames on the stack. And you get an error called the stack overflow. Yeah, there's so much stuff that the computer tells you the stack of functions you're calling is overflowing. But we did put in something to say, when we're calculating the factorial of one, don't ask for the factorial of zero. We know our result. Right, okay. So we now know our result. The machine calculates the factorial of one and it does 
result equal one. It calculates this result. The result is one. And now that one is done. The result is one. It sends back the result of our factorial here. And that, well, we can throw it away. N isn't one anymore. We are in the previous thing in the stack, which takes two times the result it just calculated, two times one, that's two. The new result is now two. Can you see what is going to happen now? The new result is now two. This is done. Its result is sent back to the caller and that can go. Now we're in the previous one where n was three, three times the factor of two, which has just been worked out. Three times two is six. The new result factorial of two of three is six. And that calculation is done. That result is sent back to the thing that called it, which is here. And we can forget that one. And we do four times the factor of three, which was six, which is 24. The new result is 24. The machine has finished this calculation. It sends 24 back to its caller, and that is finally five times the factorial of four, five times 24, which is 120, and it sends back its result. of 120 to the initial call. We have factorial of five, whoops. We have worked out factorial of five is 120 in a function that is what we call recursive. That is the function calls itself. I will put in a link to the code so that it can be seen in the description of the video. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for watching. Remember to keep practicing any Python, any programming. And uh, thank you to HomePride, I suppose. <laughs>